What is Cafe Mocha? Experts, celebrities. Hey, this is John Legend. Yo, it's Trudy Idris Elba. This is Fantasia. I am Ian LeVance. Hey, everybody, it's your girl Tamar Braxton. Music and features from a woman's perspective. Intriguing conversation. The Swag Award. Espresso. The MC Light Mix. Radio from a woman's perspective. What flavor are you, baby? This is Cafe Mocha. This is Cafe Mocha. All month long, we're encouraging you to reach higher, try harder, and live smarter. On the way, Angie Stone talks about how she's gotten smarter about diabetes. And Tashina Arnold educates us on lupus. Go to CafeMochaRadio.com, click on the Smarter tab, let us know how you're living smarter, and you may wind up at the 2015 NAACP Image Awards. First up, Angie Stone. One of the hottest songs in the country. Stay with me. It's Angelique. Cafe Mocha is challenging everyone to live smarter. This weekend, the focus is health. I got a chance to talk to Angie Stone at the Harlem Healthy Soul Fair. She broke down how she's gotten smarter. So what sort of changes? First of all, how did you find out you were diabetic? Because I understand a lot of people go for a long time without knowing. How did you find out and what changes have you had to make in life? Well, you know, it's hereditary, number one, and uh, I gained a sea of weight right all of a sudden and frequent urination. Some people have signs. I was lucky enough that I had symptoms. Some people don't get symptoms. And I was on the way to amusement park with my family and on the course of a two or three hour trip I had to stop to use the restroom at least ten times. By the time I was uh, got to the park I was completely depleted of my electrolytes which caused my body to kind of cramp up um, and thenceforth looking into what caused that and of course it was diabetes. One of the things I had to do was definitely watch my diet and I'm, I really shaved a lot of things down, not completely out of my diet, but they had to be a lifestyle change and that lifestyle change came in the form of drinking a lot more water, a lot less juice, a lot less Kool-Aid and definitely no sodas. When you think of Halle Berry who is the pitch of perfect health to us, who is also a diabetic, you would never think that she would have the issue, but when it's hereditary you have to get tested, you must find out. Some of us are blessed or lucky luckier than others um, with regards to just having it disappear. But in my case, I'm praying for a cure to come about and uh, just want to be a champion on the team of just looking out for myself and others. Thanks, Angie. You can share your story of how you're getting smarter at CafeMochaRadio.com. Click on the Smarter tab and you could be headed to the 2015 NAACP Image Awards in L.A. It's presented by Hyundai. I'm Angelique. We're asking you to live smarter and healthier. I talked to Tashina Arnold at the Harlem Healthy Soul Fair about lupus. My sister has lupus, one of uh, the seven diseases that she has, and it's an autoimmune disease, and it is very prevalent among the uh, African-American community, especially black women. A lot of people are dying from it, and they don't have to, so uh, it's almost like nutrition. You know, it's like you got to eat right, you eat right, your body will treat you right. Uh, Same thing with lupus. It's, uh, you know, you need to go to a specific doctor, which is a rheumatologist, and you have to be... Uh, carefully diagnosed with it. A lot of, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people who have it, they don't know they have it because it comes in so many different forms. The way my sister found out about it was that she woke up one morning and she was fatigued. She was tired. So, you know, us as black women, we're always always tired. tired, Exactly. So a lot of things, a lot of times, you know, you'll, you'll have something and not know you have it because you just think you're tired. So ladies, we got to listen to our bodies, get things checked out. I know it's scary, but part of this living smarter challenge is being courageous. And Cafe Mocha wants to hear all about how you're living smarter. Go to CafeMochaRadio.com, click the Smarter tab for a chance at tickets to the 2015 NAACP Image Awards in L.A., California. It's presented by Hyundai. (laughs) Roxanne, how are you getting smarter? I'm getting smarter in dealing with my health. And the one thing that I think that people forget is that in order for you to be able to give anything to anyone else, you have to be emotionally healthy, financially healthy, but more importantly, spiritually healthy. This is Cafe Mocha. It's Cafe Mocha. 
are you getting smarter with your health? And calling in, I guess she heard us on the air and she wants to uh, contribute. Lovey Ajayi. And uh, what is your Red Pump Project campaign? Explain that to us. So the Red Pump Project is a nonprofit organization. And we raise awareness about the impact of HIV and AIDS on women and girls. And we use Red Shoes as a conversation starter. We're national and we're five years old. Now, how hard is it to, to have women, young or old, have the HIV AIDS conversation? Because nobody wants to really do it. Right, no one wants to do it, which is why we kind of use red shoes to trick them into doing it. So, you know, red, red's the power color, it's the color of HIV and AIDS, and, you know, we use it to get their attention. Um, and we kind of, our goal is to basically make it easier for people to talk about it. Um, and if we can use fashion to, to do it, Hey. And to the guy who won't put on a condom? <laughs> Walk away, honestly, because... <laughs> you mean roll away, grab grab your drawers and, and roll out? Basically, because it's, it's like, it's, you know, if not with you, then with who? You got to protect yourself. You know, one of the things that's been concerning me is I hear that in the major metropolitan black areas that the HIV rates are through the roof like Africa through the roof in New mm-hmm. York and places in Atlanta and D.C. It is. It's, it's definitely something we got to address. Like D.C., they actually, it's like 3% of black men there will end up having HIV in their lifetime, which is huge. 3%? Um, yeah. See, that doesn't sound like a, a large number. That doesn't... It doesn't sound like a large number, but anything over 1% is a problem. Okay. Um, so it's one of those things that's like, we can't ignore it. Right. And actually, back to your question the other time, like, now the female condom exists. Mm-hmm. So we can actually take some of that power back into our own hands. Have you seen that thing? Yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's all I have I've to say. <laughs> we, have, we have an event called Cupcakes and Condoms that we do, and each one we do, we do in every city, we have a health professional come and do a demonstration uh, um, on a dummy, on a little dummy mannequin thing. Sure. Um, to show people, and we've had panels with people of all ages actually answer questions that people had about using it. So, right. Yeah. Well, you got to do what you got to do. Lovey, how do uh, people reach your Red Pump project? So our website is redpump.org, and we are all over social media. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. So if you're looking for our fan page, we'd love for you to join. Just search facebook.com slash redpumpproject. We are very easy to find. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Thank you. Hey, don't forget to log on to CafeMochaRadio.com. Click on the Smarter tab because we're giving away a trip to the 2015 NAACP Image Awards in Hollywood. Presented by Hyundai. Coming up, Madame Noir asks, did y'all see? Like you, uh, uh, Ursher. <laughs> It's Cafe Mocha. How are you living smarter? I'm Angelique. This weekend, we're talking about smarter health. We've all been told that you don't need a mammogram till 40. Our next guest is a real NFL wife, breast cancer survivor, and cheerleader for her husband, Darren Sproles of the Philadelphia Eagles. Michelle Sproles is on the line. Michelle, you're a you're an N- NFL wife, right? Yes, I am. Okay, first, <laughs> first for all the football fans out there, who's your husband? Darren Sproles. And who's he play for? Philadelphia Eagles. All Fly right. Fly. Okay. Now, you know, we got to get that all out of there. But the reason we've invited you on Cafe Mocha is to talk about breast cancer and specifically your story. Um, when were you diagnosed and how did it happen? I was actually diagnosed um, in October 2012. I was 28 years old. Wow. Um, Actually, after giving birth to my youngest daughter, who's now two years old, um, I noticed an area in my right breast, uh, just an area that was a little thicker than my left breast. And, um, you know, it was... I was feeling around and I was like, kind of felt a little different and it was just, you know, kind of bothering me, not hurting or painful or anything, but but bothering me mentally. So I went ahead and I saw my uh, primary physician and 
she did an exam and she sent me to get an ultrasound, which is something that you would, um, you know, give to, to someone at 28 years old. You send them for an ultrasound and it came back as obstructed milk ducts. So okay. basically they were saying that there were um, uh, milk. It was milk like lodged in the milk ducts. Well, okay. it, it didn't make any sense to me because I actually didn't breastfeed. So I was wondering, like, you know, how could this be? My daughter, you know, she was about three months at the time. And I'm like, even if, you know, you know, if I hadn't breastfed, why would there be milk there? It should be dried up and gone. So um, it, it didn't make sense to me. So I went ahead and I actually saw my OB. He did an exam and um, he didn't think it was anything alarming. I didn't fit, you know, the general criteria for um, breast cancer. You know, I was 28 years old, uh, generally healthy. Um, you know, I've been an athlete for 14 years, okay. so it, it was nothing. It doesn't run in my family. So nothing gave the doctor any indication that, you know, it would be breast cancer. There was no palpable lump. Um, but for me, in my gut and in my mind, mm -hmm. I just knew something didn't, didn't feel right. I'm thankful that I, I followed my gut and I followed that intuition because, you know, I found it in a, in a stage that it was, you know, highly treatable. It, it was non-life-threatening. I didn't have to undergo any chemo or any radiation. Um, it was in a localized area, but it was a, a quite a large area of it. Um, and the doctor did say that the good thing about it is even, you know, being that it was such a large area, it was, you know, all of the area was DCIS. So that was, a, that was definitely a blessing, and I was, you know... I'm eternally grateful and thankful that my case was, was what it was. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I'm on the line with Michelle Sproles. Get smarter about getting tested and log on to CafeMochaRadio.com. Click the Smarter tab. Get registered to win a trip to the 2015 NAACP Image Awards. More on the way. What's being talked about on the street? Online. And sister to sister. It's Did Y'all See? On Cafe Mocha. Did y'all see the crazy story about the Ohio lesbian couple? They had a sperm donor, and then all of a sudden, the woman has her baby, and the baby is black. And they're like, uh, I didn't ask for this. I and they basically filed a lawsuit and said, uh, I asked for a white baby, not a black baby. Please give me my money back. I understand it. It may sound racist to some people, but as black people, I want, if I ask for a black baby, that's what I want. Please give me my black baby. I don't want a white baby, an Asian baby, a Latin baby. Black baby, that's what I want. That's what I asked for. That's what I paid for. But at the same time, when they released the news in the press, that she didn't have a picture, and now you have your picture out here, your child can easily Google that when they're older and see that, hey, my parent didn't want to know about my culture, which goes back to white people never wanting to know about us, unless it's about food or, you know, something <laughs> cultural, and then we always have to learn about their history and their ways. But is it really like her not wanting to learn about black culture? She said her family is very racially insensitive. So you birthed a black child into a racially insensitive family, and you live in a predominantly white community. So that's going to be hard for the child either way. So I understand. And all this is hard on the pockets. So once again, <laughs> when I want my black or white baby, give me what I asked for. But they gave her a refund. <laughs> Nothing like a free baby. <laughs> <laughs> that was Did Y'all See? With the ladies of Madame Noir on Cafe Mocha. For more, check out CafeMochaRadio.com. This is Cafe Mocha. It's Cafe Mocha. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Talking to Michelle Sproles. Now tell us about the Pink Line Breast Cancer Awareness Campaign. Okay, so the Pink Line is actually a division of my hairline. Oh. Um, I, have a hair, I own a hair salon in San Diego, and we have a, a hairline, um, and the Pink Line is a division of that. So basically with um, the cells, a portion of the proceeds go towards making hair units and wigs for chemotherapy patients. So oh, that's nice. what the pink line is. Okay. And the campaign itself is just, I wanted to, you know, get some women under the age of 35, because that's really the demographic I'm targeting. Everybody in, in general, not just women under the age of 35, but because it, you know, it was relevant to me and happened to me, I really wanted to kind of send a message to that age group in particular. Um, but the campaign itself is just kind of just bringing awareness to it, you know, to breast cancer and, you know, for, for that for that demographic because we're we're the new leading cases of, of diagnosis nowadays and I just really want um, you know women of color to be educated to be aware and know that you know unfortunately I mean fortunately we're actually least likely in comparison to our Caucasian counterparts to develop breast cancer but unfortunately we're um, most likely to actually die from it 41% higher than our Caucasian counterparts so that that's really um, 
you know, it's just alarming for me. Um, and it should be to everyone else. But those, you know, those things are due to, you know, socioeconomic levels, right. um, you know, finances, geographical barriers, and all of those things. So I, I wanted to put together the campaign and also start doing, you know, events around the community, you know, just educating us about where we can, um, you know, get, you know, treatment or go get the mammograms when we don't have the insurance and just provide um, resources and, and access to resources that we wouldn't ordinarily have in those communities. So how do people... I'll find the pink line and get involved. Well, um, you can visit my website, 7image.com. 7image is actually the name of my salon. Um, it's under construction right now, but you can definitely go there and, and find information. There's a link that leads you to the pinkfair.com, which, was, um, which is actually um, the website that we had for when we put on the first uh, annual Pink Fair, which we put on this past summer. And you can find Michelle Sproles by going to pinklinefair.com for more info. I'm Angelique. It's time to get our party on. The light mix is up next. And don't forget, go to cafemocharadio.com. Click the Smarter tab because somebody's getting hooked up with ticks to the 2015 NAACP Image Awards in L.A. It's presented by Hyundai. The Cafe Mocha Espresso is being brought to you by the Hyundai Sonata. Living smarter includes seeing a dentist. I asked Dentist of the Stars, Catrice Austin, why it's so important. That gooky stuff that forms on your teeth every day is nothing but bacteria. So not only can it cause mouth problems like gum disease, cavities, and even tooth loss, it can cause heart attacks, strokes. If you're pregnant, it can cause problems in pregnancy. And there's a huge connection between oral health and diabetes. And part of living smarter means voting. Those midterm elections may not seem important, but that's where some of them crazy laws get passed. And we're left wondering, when did that happen? For any woman out there uh, who's listening, who might think, well, my vote doesn't matter. You know, uh, what is it? What does it matter? Politics is too complicated. Rich right. folks run it anyway. Right. If we look at just one of the battleground states, North Carolina, and I could give you this example in every single battleground state. We won North Carolina last uh, presidential election in 2008 by just 14,000 votes. Wow. And when you break that number down across precincts throughout that state, that's just five votes per precinct in the state of North Carolina. That That's the margin of difference in the victory of Barack Obama in 2008. Five votes. You hear me? We heard you, First Lady. Let's all get out and vote next month. That's the Espresso. I'm Angelique. This is Cafe Mocha. Cafe Mocha, your girl MC Light. This is new music. It's called Dear John. Only here on Cafe Mocha Radio. MC Light, the light mix. Wrapping up the show. Before I go, I want to say hi to Natalie Simmons at Affinity Health Plan. I met her at Circle of Sisters in New York a couple weeks back. And we all know the first step to smarter health is called health insurance. Hey, let us know how you're getting smarter. Go to CafeMochaRadio.com and click the Smarter tab. You could be headed to the 2015 NAACP Image Awards with Cafe Mocha. Presented by Hyundai. Next week... Smarter Money. Yeah, I know. Cafe Mocha is a production of Miles Ahead Broadcasting in partnership with Westwood One. Executive producer, Sheila Eldridge. Writer and producer, Angelique Perrin. For comments, booking, and more information, visit CafeMochaRadio.com. Cafe Mocha.